People ask me often about my family, and what they really want to know is, is everybody in your family tall? My sisters were five feet, five inches tall. Mother, five feet, five inches tall. We don't ask any questions. <laughs> we just let it all go. And my sister Catherine and I were close in ages, and we have a combative part of our relationship. We love each other. You know I love you, Catherine. I do love you, but we probably need to work on our bonding. <laughs> and the reason we have this is we shared a bedroom growing up. And what this means is if you came down the hall in our little house and got to the end and turned to the left in our bedroom, there was a big piece of masking tape right across the center of that door. <laughs> and if you were a friend of mine or me, you turned this way and you came in and you had a little bit in that room. But if you were a friend of Catherine's, you came down and you'd automatically turn in this way. Sometimes my friends would be on my bed staring at her friends like waiting on one of them dare step across that line. <laughs> And when we were growing up, she had an, a, a spiral notebook, and she said they were the official rules of hopscotch. I said, let me see them. No, they're my book of hopscotch rules. The box could only be so many inches by so many inches, and that meant smaller than my foot. <laughs> so if I hopped, I was out of the game. So do you understand why we had a little bit of a, a rivalry, but we do love each other, but we need to work on our bonding, and I'm so glad you're here. Well, one day I was sitting at my phone early in the morning. I had come in from a trip, and the phone rang. And she has a mind like a steel trap. Once something goes in it, it goes pop and closes. And you never know. You can just see it opening. And, uh oh, here it comes. She's going to pull something up from 40 years ago. Watch out. There it goes. <laughs> and so as we were sitting there, the phone rang, and I picked it up. And Catherine said, I'm going to be in and out all day today. When are you going to come on down here with my birthday present? I had totally forgotten her birthday, and it was a big birthday. It was what we call in our family an ugly zero birthday. I believe it was Andy Taylor in the greatest television show that's ever been produced, The Andy Griffith Show, who said, oh, of course, quoting someone else, what a tangled web we weave when first we practice to deceive. I said, Catherine, I got your gift right here in my lap. I'm wrapping it up right now. <laughs> I, I was wondering, though, if you would like to go with me to hear me speak at a banquet tonight. I'm speaking at the Habitat for Humanity banquet here in town. There was a long pause. I thought she'd hung up. She said, ride from North Carolina with a two-year-old to California is something I would consider. But hearing you give a speech on my birthday, another one of your speeches, no. You just come on down here with my present. I'll put on some coffee. <laughs> and I hung it up, and I started looking around my office for something I could give her, just anything that, you know, when you speak, you get a lot of nice things, trays, trophies, all, a calculator, things, that they always have on there something like Alabama Plumbers, <laughs> National Funeral Directory Association, and I didn't see anything that would jump off and say, I'm not monogrammed, Catherine would love me, and then it dawned on me. I had the perfect thing. Didn't even have to leave the house. I would give Catherine one of her big dinner plates in her good china, not her everyday china, not that stuff you got at the grocery store when you went 49,000 weeks in a row. <laughs> this was the good china. And I had a plate of her china because we all have the same china patterns, all three daughters. This was mother's idea. All three of you should have the same china pattern. So if you want to have a formal sit-down dinner party for 36 people in your home, the tables will be gorgeous. <laughs> and then, of course, Mother realized now, if I got 36 people at my house, there is a catering barbecue truck in the driveway, <laughs> a stack of paper plates right there where they're throwing that barbecue down. So I got the plate out, and I thought, this is perfect. How smart of me to remember that. And just when I looked at the plate, ooh, a pang of consciousness hit me. And I thought, I can't do this. This is a big birthday. This is just a plate. I can save this for another year. <laughs> I need to give her something much, much bigger because of the cashmere sweater incident. 
one time in high school. When we were in high school, she left early and was supposed to take me to school, but she didn't take me, and I had to walk. So before I walked, I walked down that hall, went into my bedroom, stood on my side, and deliberately stepped to her side, got out her only cashmere sweater, put it on, and wore it to high school all day. I am much bigger. I spent the day tugging at her cashmere sweater. <laughs> and to this day, we can be together at Christmas, and that little steel trap mine of hers starts opening up. And she'll say, I didn't have a thing to wear today. You know, my cashmere sweater still stretched all out of shape. <laughs> And it's been 50 years since this happened. So I put the sweater on and I wore it. And so standing there with it, I thought, this, this is not good enough. And in front of my eyes was my solution. I would give her the big dinner platter in my good china. Now, let me just ask the women in here. Anyway, what would the good dinner platter have cost all those years ago? $100? Uh, easily $100. And by now, it'd be worth $200, I know. So here I was going to give her my good platter for $200, but I didn't have a choice. I had to get down there. And then it, it bothered me, so I looked at the platter, and it was huge, and I took it, and I did it across my backside to get the dust off. <laughs> and I put, put the platter in this brown paper sack and then put this one on top and found an old yellow Christmas bow, snapped it on there, and got in there and got in the car and was riding down the interstate going to Graham seven miles with the $300 platter sitting on the seat next to me. And then it dawned on me, what am I doing? What am I doing? I'm hyperventilating. I can't let her have my $300 platter. <laughs> and I pulled off because I remembered the baby chipmunk incident. When I was just a little girl, I saw them in the yard one day, and they're fast. And they got those stripes, and the little tails stick up here. <laughs> they're cute. You can even name one of them Alvin. <laughs> Give him a couple of backup chips, <laughs> and they can sing Christmas time. Y'all don't know that one. How about I got friends in low place? <laughs> but let me just tell you something. Chipmunks are rodents. I don't care what you do, how you dress them up, put them in movies, they're rodents. But that day, running around in the yard, I said, Catherine, I'm going to catch a chipmunk. And it was those sister's head. You could just see her thinking, and she kind of shifted her weight, even at like seven or eight, and said to me, you can't ever catch them. But if you want to see them, they swim around in the toilet bowl at <laughs> night. They, when it's hot, they can hold their breath, and they come up the pipes into the toilet. Their mother can't come. She's too big. They just come by themselves. <laughs> and after they swim around a while and they're cool, <laughs> they hold their breath and they swim and go back down again. I said, no, -uh. <laughs> if you don't believe me, you go in there one night in the dark and sit down. You'll find out. <laughs> Later, I said, Catherine, you told me that. And she said, I remember telling it, but didn't I tell you it wasn't true? I said, no, you never told me it wasn't true. For two weeks, I was terrified to go in there. <laughs> and then one night, I had Daddy. He'd gotten at a convention. A yardstick had tractor and supply company written on it. And I was over here trying to lift the lid to see if they were in there. Two weeks, I had done this. And Mama came up and said, what are you doing? And I said, I'm looking to see if there's any baby chipmunks in the toilet. She turned right around and said, Catherine. <laughs> So I'm sitting here on the side of the road, and I don't want to give her the platter. <laughs> and then it dawns on me, I don't have a choice. I had lied. I had told her I had a gift. I had to get down there with something. So I pulled back on the interstate with my $400 platter <laughs> and went to Graham. And when I opened, got out of the car, she's waiting at the door. And I went up and I said, here, I'm going to give you this. Now I want to get one thing straight, Catherine. I put more money in your gift this year. But it's a big gift, and I, I wanted something you wanted, and I think you can pass it on down to your daughters. And you know we have a new star in the state of North Carolina. Y'all know who he is? He's from Garner, North Carolina. Who is he? <laughs> Scotty McCrary. And one of the songs he sang in the American Idol competition was, Gone, gone, gone. That's the way I felt. I gave her that gift and walked out of there. Gone, <laughs> gone, gone was my $500 platter. <laughs> 
she went around and she sat down and I got a cup of coffee and I heard her rip the bag. And the first and only thing she really said when I was in the kitchen was, how many times have you used this yellow bow? And I said, doesn't matter. It's what's inside that counts. And when I came around the corner to her den, she had the platter in her lap and she looked up at me. And I'll tell you what, if you've ever sprung for something that you think's big, and you don't know whether you ought to do it or not. When I saw the expression on her face, I knew I had done the right thing. She said, where did you get this? Our pattern is discontinued. <laughs> uh, don't be worried about that, folks. I looked her right back in the face and said, eBay. <laughs> she said, I bet you had to pay a lot. I did have to pay a lot, Catherine. But I love you, and I want to do something special for you. And right at that time, I saw that little smile, the same little smile I saw when she said, if you want to see the baby chipmunks. <laughs> she smiled, and she said, that's interesting. You might as well pull another one of my sweaters over a baby elephant. What? <laughs> she flipped that big platter over and pointed to a piece of masking tape with a name on it and said, this is my platter. LAUGHTER